A lot like the Women's World Cup, women's hockey takes the world by storm every four years. It shines in the spotlight during the Olympics and then basically falls off the radar. So at a crossroads now, the world's top players are taking matters into their own hands, purposely choosing to boycott an existing league to prove a point and build what they feel is a better future. On a steamy summer September Saturday in a near empty Conti Forum, the journey begins for the Dream Gap Tour, an organized scrimmage pitting some of the best women's hockey players in the world against Boston College. Their first chance as a union to hit the ice together and take that next step toward creating a profitable, successful league, a full-time profession for female hockey players. Right now there is a dream gap uh, between little girls and little boys and what they can aspire to be when they grow up. And so, um, unfortunately right now, for the young girls that are up and coming, there isn't that dream to be able to be a professional hockey player when they grow up. If you're born a boy, you're, you have the opportunity to do that, but if you're born a girl, obviously, uh, there is that discrepancy right now, and so um, the fight for that is, is for the next generation, but also for the game, because I think that the women's game has grown so much, and it's continuing to grow. We're, we're not yet afforded the, the resources, the exposure, the visibility. We're trying to fight for a sustainable league moving forward. Um, basically, the goal is to give these little girls an opportunity when they're older to have a profession in women's ice hockey that, you know, we really didn't have a dream that they can actually attain and move on to and have a career in that. As recently as this past spring, there were two options for women to play professionally, and that was part of the problem. The Canadian Women's Hockey League ceased operations in July, citing an overbearing amount of financial strain some of which was created when the National Women's Hockey League was launched in 2015. Two leagues created fragmentation. Sponsorship and advertising money can only stretch so far. The NWHL, based in the United States, is still operational, but facing major scrutiny for the manner in which it treats its players. I thought we weren't getting questions about the NWHL, so I'm going to skip that one. Katie Burt grew up in Lynn played goalie at Boston College. In fact, she was one of the top goaltenders in the history of women's college hockey. Along with nearly 200 other players, Burt has joined the newly formed Professional Women's Hockey Players Association. They will not play in the NWHL. They will spend the next few months showcasing their skill around North America together, demonstrating what women's hockey at its highest level can truly look like. We're going into different markets, right? We're going to uh, you know, New Hampshire, Chicago, there's a showcase today up in Toronto. You know, we're kind of hitting all these markets trying to push our mission, gain some traction, gain some support. As female hockey players, we kind of are trying to step up and say that we deserve better. Um, you know, better in the sense that m more support, not just from sponsors, but in terms of a marketing perspective. It's hard to get people at games when they don't know about it. So there have been a number of people that I've talked to that are like, oh, like, what is this? What it is, in reality, is a leap of faith, a belief in themselves and what they stand for, what they deserve as highly skilled athletes with many goals, but one primary mission. Putting something out there that's, you know, that's the best product that we can put out in the ice and also just, just growing the game. You know, we're the best at what we do in the entire world, right? And I think, you know, we deserve more than, than what we've got in the past, and, and that's what we're working towards. And, and it's going to be a grind. It's going to be every day. You know, we're going to have to show up, and we're going to have to work for it. We deserve at least a livable wage and health insurance and kind of the simple things that you would anticipate having that we don't have. The key to success in a women's professional league is um, starting with the proper infrastructure, facilities, uh, good training times, great ice time, full-time staff, the ability to have that livable wage where we're not working eight to five every day and trying to fit hockey in on the side. We're definitely taking steps forward. Uh, we have a lot of great support from Adidas, Bauer, um, BioSteel, a lot of great sponsors coming our way and it's just awesome to see their support. In 10 years, you know, who knows where we're gonna be. You know, we're gonna be, you know, 10, 20, 30 steps ahead of where we are now um, and, and that's awesome. So the NWHL commissioner is Danny Ryland. She played hockey at Northeastern, some local ties there as well. Danny's disappointed by what has transpired. She claims the NWHL is doing everything it can do to build the league the right way. And by the way, that league, she says, isn't going anywhere. Ryland would certainly like to have the best players in the world be a part of her league, but many of them have been burned already. And right now, they're intent on staying away. Something to follow for sure.